And Antares is on its way, delivering uh, Cygnus to orbit. So let's talk about Cygnus. It's on its way to the space station. It'll be there this weekend. It's carrying just tons of science for yeah. the crew, a lot of student experiments. Talk a little bit about what's, uh, what's on board. A big deal about this launch is that we have a lot of uh, national laboratory payloads. So okay. the national lab is managed by CASIS. So this is a big one for CASIS because it's the first launch that has the largest amount of CASIS selected science on yeah. it. Okay. Um, such as looking at um, how ants behave in space. What we're interested in with the ants is looking at how their movement behavior changes in different patterns in a microgravity environment. And um, we don't know how they're going to behave. We've never looked at this before and it's actually going to be performed on orbit and at the same time, um, you know, there'll be cameras watching these ants. And that, that imagery and video will be beamed down to students on the ground. And the students will have their own um, education experiments set with the ants set up in different classrooms all around the country, mm -hmm. following the movement of the ants, predicting what they might do, pre thinking and learning about ant behavior, and just probing the minds of the students as scientists and get them asking the important questions. At the same time, it's really fun because, yeah. you know, they're getting real on-orbit imagery, and, <laughs> and ants are kind of cool to learn about anyway. This experiment is about expandable search networks. It's about how ants can adjust the shape of their paths to search a space in the best possible way, adjusting their searching to the number of ants and the size of the space. All right, we are getting ready to set up the Ants in Space experiment, part of the uh, CGBA Science Insert program conducted by BioSur Space Technologies. Uh, and there's a curriculum associated with this as well that came out of uh, the Baylor College of Medicine Center for Education Outreach. And so what we're using are common pavement ants. So the common pavement ant uh, is found all over the United States, all over, uh, probably all over the world, and it's they're commonly on the on sidewalks or you might see them around foundations of buildings and these ants typically are in uh, colonies with one queen and up to 10,000 worker ants and those worker ants a lot of what they do is forage and their behavior as they do that foraging is one of the things we're going to be looking at uh, in this experiment and uh, typically the area that a, an individual ant will uh, forage in is somewhat dictated by how many ants are in that area, how big the area is. And so if there's more ants in the area and uh, as they meet each other, they're gonna continuously turn and their area of, of searching is gonna be a little bit smaller. Uh, but if there's less ants or a larger area, they're, they're gonna be able to walk in a straighter line. And so a couple of the questions we're going to look at today are in the larger areas, do the ants, uh, do they go in a straighter line? And also, how is that impacted by microgravity? And one of the neat things about this experiment is that it's going to have an educational outreach. So classrooms, kids uh, down on Earth, can set up their own control experiments that will look very similar to this, and they can see how the behaviors of the ants might change in microgravity versus their ants that they might have down on the earth. And so that's kind of a, a neat aspect of this experiment is that the, the kids, can, uh, kids can participate in it. And in fact, I think if teachers are interested, they can go to uh, bioedonline.org and probably find out some more information on that. So let's talk about the test setup. What you see at this point um, is there's four habitats here and each of the habitats has a nesting area and you can see the nesting area up here and that's where the ants are at this point in time, uh, how they came up in the rocket. And then what will happen is we have an area, foraging area A and a foraging area B. And so the first phase of the experiments will open up the forage. This, uh, there's a, a wall here that's keeping the ants in the nesting area. We'll open that up and they'll be allowed to come out and forage in this smaller area. And so we would expect, uh, based on uh, the behavior, that they would 
would work in, uh, uh, have more turns associated in their foraging uh, than they will when we open up the second wall and give them a bigger area. And in this case, we would expect to see them walking in more straight lines. And so that's kind of the, the, the basics of the test setup. What we'll do is we're going to start with just the, the two upper uh, habitats and then we'll, uh, we'll at a later time move to the lower habitat. So right now you can see the ants in their nesting area. There is food available through that little rope that you can see. Uh, there's uh, a liquid that they can have access to and I guess they need to, to have a lot of fluids uh, because they are so small. And in fact, I think if teachers are interested, they can go to uh, bioedonline.org and probably find out some more information on that.